Aviation has made astonishing progress in a relatively short time, providing some of the most complex technological achievements of the 20th century and the most formidable weapon systems in the history of man. Far from the days when explosives were dropped over the side from an open cockpit, today's weapon systems are sophisticated instruments of precision that bring together more scientific disciplines than any other product. With as many different aircraft and applications as there are threats to counter and targets to attack, and over the years, a number of these weapon systems have been designed and developed by the Grumman Aerospace Corporation. Today, four Grumman aircraft are primary deterrents in the defensive network of the United States and its allies, and will be until the next cycle of technology comes to term. None of these modern weapon systems happened overnight. In fact, with the exception of the F-14 Tomcat, their genesis was in the 1958 to 1962 time frame. And in the mind's eye of Grumman design engineers long before that, always looking for the catalyst that might open up a new technology, that new invention, that breakthrough leading to a more effective weapon system. A new computer and pulse compression waveforms, for example, providing better radar resolution while using less power, allow the early warning Hawkeye to automatically detect small moving targets hundreds of miles away. Interferometers for measuring elevation angles and infrared target sensors are keys to intruder technology low-level terrain penetration, and accurate weapons delivery in any weather, day or night. And traveling wave tubes that put out a lot more power over a wider frequency range, together with computerized threat assessment, are primary elements in the effectiveness of the EA-6B tactical jamming system. Now, the F-14 Tomcat, with its high-technology titanium structure and swing-wing design, the only really new weapon system in a generation of fighter development. With a long-range Phoenix missile system, which can stand off and fire at six targets at the same time, even while monitoring a number of other threats simultaneously. It's an extraordinary machine with a history of fighter development behind it and a future that will take it well into the 1990s. The 1990s. What will this last quarter of the 20th century mean in terms of developing new military systems, new tactics and airborne platforms for the 1990s? What kind of hardware for attack, for defense? What kind of technology? Well, if it took 10 years or more to design and implement today's technologies, certainly we have to have some idea now of where we'll be heading in the next generation, where the next breakthrough will be. Right now, Grumman is designing a new fighter for the Air Force. Combining supersonic cruise speeds with multi-purpose mission capabilities and an air-to-ground weapon system using relatively low-cost ordnance. Grumman is developing a standoff weapon system that can be launched with great accuracy at small targets from distances which will enable any future aircraft or the A6E to stay outside the range of defending missile and anti-aircraft fire. The technology for this radar-guided weapon system, Grumman has refined interferometers one step further and added high-speed electronic processing to provide a synthetically large radar aperture, which, in effect, increases radar resolution by making the antenna think it's bigger than it actually is. In addition to the next generation fighter, it appears that V-stall, vertical or short takeoff and landing aircraft, 
will finally come of age within the next 10 years because the technology is here now. And more importantly, because there is a need. To meet an expanding and varied threat, the Navy is looking to put more air power at sea by supplementing its carriers with smaller, air-capable platforms. The need, therefore, is for V-Stall aircraft which can perform a variety of missions, including early warning, anti-submarine, and marine air assault. The Grumman V-Stall design is already on the drawing boards and beyond, stressing simplicity and versatility, essential ingredients for a successful V-Stall, the Grumman concept features a unique nacelle package which isolates all the aircraft's V-stall functions. When coupled with a common wing, the V-stall nacelle can be used on another fuselage for another mission without changing the basic design. The amount of power required for a practical V-stall will probably be about twice that of an E2C type vehicle. But then vertical liftoff takes a lot more muscle. The engine technology is here, and tests of the Grumman control concept are important first steps. Equally important is the technological challenge of weight reduction, a problem common to all aircraft, which Grumman is meeting through the use of new boron and graphite composite materials, which are much lighter than current metal structures, stronger and cheaper too, and which may well have as much impact on future aircraft performance as the jet engine. In building an advanced composite stabilizer for the B-1 bomber, Grumman reduced the weight by 500 pounds over the metal structure and the cost by 17%. In a pioneering Air Force study to design a totally new aircraft using a maximum of composite materials, Grumman determined that 75% of the airframe structure could be made from composites. Compared with the F-111, an 80,000-pound airplane with 1960 technology, the Grumman advanced design composite aircraft could do the same mission better at about half the weight and about half the operating cost. In parallel with design studies are continuing efforts to reduce manufacturing costs. A good part of composite savings, for example, takes place in the unique Grumman integrated laminating center, where composite laminates are laid down, picked up, and transferred from one vacuum table to another trimmed into final shape by a laser, then monitored by a television camera for quality control, and stacked all automatically. For drilling holes, a five-axis computerized machine now used on metal A6E skins will be used for composites as well, with a television sensor to determine blind tolerances, automatically allowing for distance, contour, angles, and the precise depth of countersunk holes. For all the impact of new aerodynamic and manufacturing technologies, electronics is the key to a modern weapon system. And with today's sophisticated mission requirements, the need for smaller, faster, more accurate system performance means giving more and more responsibility to computers. One of the most significant new Grumman developments is an advanced radar for a follow-on airborne early warning system, replacing today's rotodome with embedded antennas built right into the wings and fuselage. The 360-degree antenna array greatly reduces aerodynamic drag and weight while providing better detection and processing performance. Individual antenna elements controlled by a computer provide proper beam steering without physically moving the antenna itself. It's all accomplished electronically at the speed of light.
Grumman technology extends even further to a satellite system with a large antenna packaged on Earth to be automatically unfurled in space, ready to operate as a public service platform. There are several other highly sophisticated programs, an orbital construction demonstration article and the beam builder, for example. Fabrication systems that eventually will enable us to literally build large structures in outer space. Development work has started. Sample beams have already been tested. Practical solar power is also being pursued with the development of an orbiting satellite capable of supplying enough energy to power New York State. The technology is here, and Grumman is putting all the pieces together. Total systems integration on a broad scale. There's more to it than technology, of course. Experience is part of it. So is dedication and the need to excel, and an innate sense of what it takes to develop effective aircraft systems and space machines. Grumman has been there before, with experimental models and long production runs, a history of innovation and practical engineering know-how, blending the new and the not new, and discovering the future along the way.